Hi, welcome to Biology in a Minute. I'm Ms. Feldbush. Today I'm going to talk about the cell theory. In order to understand the cell theory, the first thing you need to know is that a theory is not the same thing as a law, and it's not the same thing as a hypothesis. Laws and hypotheses are both very narrow, and they describe specific circumstances. A theory is more of an umbrella, and because it's an umbrella, it describes broad observations made by many scientists over many years. And so in order to understand a theory, you need to know who the many scientists were and what the many years were. The first scientist that was important to the development of the cell theory was named Robert Hooke. Way back in 1665, he made his own microscope, and using that microscope, he looked at lots of things. But one of the things that he looked at was the shaving of some cork, which is the bark of a tree. And so using that tree bark, he drew this picture. Um, it looked a lot like this. It actually was this picture. And he named the cell because he thought it looked a lot like the little rooms that monks lived in, and those were called cells. And so even though he wasn't actually looking at cells, he was looking at empty cell walls where cells used to be, we still give him credit because he came up with the name. The next important scientist, and the one who actually looked at living cells for the first time, was called Leeuwenhoek. And he was another um, eyeglass microscope maker. And he looked at lots and lots of things over many years. He looked at little bits of pond water, and he looked at scrapings from his own teeth. He was actually the first person to see bacteria. And um, because he looked at living organisms and identified those as cells, we give him credit for the next step. A lot of time passed. The reason a lot of time passed is because when Leeuwenhoek died, he hadn't told anybody how to make microscopes. And so almost 100 years later, uh, people got good at making microscopes again. And along came two scientists who both made important discoveries. The first was called Schleiden. And Schleiden was a botanist. He looked at all sorts of plant cells. And when he looked at all of these different plant cells, he realized that all of the plants seemed to be made out of cells. Schleiden met up with his good friend Schwann, who was a botanist, and they started to talk. Schwann had been looking at animals, and he also was noticing that as he drew all of these animals, they seemed to be made of cells. And so Schleiden and Schwann together are attributed with the idea that plants are made out of cells and animals are made out of cells. This is going to be the next important part of the cell theory. A little bit of time passed, and there was a man named Virchow. Virchow was also looking at cells, but he was interested in the origin of cells. Because so far, Schleiden and Schwann knew that things were made out of cells, but they didn't know where cells came from. So after much careful observation, Virchow decided that cells came from other cells. And this is going to be the last part of the cell theory. And so, after all of these scientists for many years did all sorts of research, we took their work, put it together into a cohesive theory, and it's called the cell theory. The cell theory, as it was first written, had three main parts. All living things are made out of cells. That's thanks to Schleiden and Schwann. The cell is the basic unit of structure and function in all living things, which just means that's the building block that makes us up. And finally, all cells come from pre-existing cells. And that part of the theory is thanks to Virchow. So, um, as all theories, you can continue to add to this. You can continue to put new information into it. We've continued to add more parts about genetics and about heredity because a theory as a big umbrella explanation continues to allow us to revise and to modify as the science allows.